Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday so far. This is Coach Bill with uh, Weight Loss Made Easy. Hey, guys, today's Thursday. Um, I am actually doing my um, interval cardio moderately today. Uh, and I mean, I'm stress stressing moderately. I don't, I only get, I do it for 20 minutes, and I only do it to where I feel my body is warming up and I do get my heart rate up a little bit but um, and 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 this this week so far guys I've been doing I've done my, this will be my second uh, 42 hour uh, fast and uh, yes I am working out at the end of my 42 uh, hour fast doing my interval strength training uh, and yes I'm able to finish my uh, workouts in the strength training with plenty of energy. I actually, uh, on Wednesday, I was super strong, and I'm gonna have to go up in some of my uh, exercises in weights, and our recovery is still the same. We're, we're recovered by the time we uh, walk out the door. So obviously, the 42-hour uh, fast has no effect as far as losing uh, strength or energy when I'm doing, when I'm exercising in that fasted state, so it's, it just shows that when you're really fat adapted, which takes time, uh, you have plenty of energy to go through an exercise, and you also are doing what? We are actually uh, producing more of the uh, new muscle satellite stem cells to help us to add lean muscle and also it's uh, known by science to help with slowing premature aging and that's why Emily and I are doing this but anyway guys to, to today my topic today is basically a topic I've talked about before it's an issue that seems to be out there more and more and more and it's an issue that I'm seeing in the gym more and more and that is the common hormones you need to know that could be sabotaging your weight loss. What I mean is for those of you, especially that are 40 over, those of you that are trying to lose the belly fat or hip fat or whatever, your body fat, and you're doing everything right, you think, you're doing everything your trainer is telling you, and yes, you lost the some weight at first, but now you've plateaued out and you're, just, and you're starving to death, and you're just not happy with the diet you're on because most of you are probably doing the Western diet. And the biggest issue that the health professionals aren't explaining or telling you is that we need to get control of the most common hormones that will sabotage your uh, results that you're looking for. And that's what you've got to go after. And science has been telling this you know for a long time so in other words weight gain and weight loss is largely controlled by the hormones so most likely all of you that are having hard a hard time your hormones are basically shot there you've got imbalanced hormones and before you can actually get the results you're looking for especially in the belly and the hips and especially for those of you that are over 40 you got to understand what these hormones do and how they affect it and how do you solve the issue and how do you get them under control. And that's what Emily and I have found the three protocols that we do is the best way to control them. And because we're doing intermittent and prolonged fasting and because we're doing primal eating and because we're hydrating with hydrogen rich, rich water, that's how we are controlling our body fat. Now, those of you that might know what kind of routine I have and how we're able to maintain our body fat, I don't use a scale to, to check my weight ever. My way of checking is by the way my clothes feel and by my belly. So what better way to check if whatever routine you're on is working <clears throat> and you can sustain that for the rest of your life without starving and without being in a moody uh, because you're starving is your belly because obviously if you're doing it right and you're maintaining a good body fat and you're, you're showing a six pack 
and it's sustaining at that six pack, then your hormones most likely are balanced and you have found a routine or protocols that are working for you without any uh, unhealthy side effects. So, but I'm gonna, this is just an overview of the most common hormones. And if you go to my YouTube channel, type in Bill Mabry, subscribe to it. When I post this on YouTube in the description center or section of it, I'll have an actual blog, co a blog post that will be more specific in explaining each one of these hormones with the science backing it up. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what that blog has in it and how by you educating yourself and understanding these hormones you will see the results but you need to understand how they work and the ones that are causing the issues and I'll tell you the number one is a issue not only in how it is how it affects your weight gain and weight loss but also with type 1 and type 2 diabetes because that's an epidemic right now and the number one uh, issue, the number, and I have it as number one because it's probably one of the most important ones you need to control because it'll affect the other ones. But the number one hormone you need to, you need to know about is called insulin. Okay, uh, insulin is produced in the pancreas. Now the job of insulin, this is where it comes in as type 2 and type 1 diabetes, the job of insulin is, okay, let's do a visual. So insulin is a key. So I want you guys to imagine your cell, all right? Now insulin is produced in the pan, uh, pan, pancreas. When you consume carbohydrates, which are converted into glucose or sugar, then it is transported into the blood. So that sugar or that glucose needs to get into your cell because it is the it is one of two energy sources your body needs to operate okay one of two the second one is fat fat is a very important energy source but but uh, glucose is much much easier for the body to go after but the problem, but what what insulin does, it's the key that will go to your cell. It opens the door up of your cell, opens it up. It lets the sugar or the glucose in your blood into each cell, so that it can be transported throughout the body and used as energy. But the problem is, and what causes type two diabetics to be overweight, or if they're overweight they are going to most likely be insulin resistance and I said go to my blog post it will explain this what happens is is that insulin resistant in type 2 diabetics is driven by overeating carbohydrates and refined sugars and cause and uh, processed foods that are, have a lot of sugar in it what happens is that the more carbohydrates you're ingesting the more insulin you're producing to get to open the doors up to get that sugar in there and what happens is because your cells are overflowing they can't take any more carbs no more glu glucose the cells are too full so the door closes because the cell just can't take anymore and then the sugar or the glucose is is bent sugar to get higher and that's why uh, that's and then what the what the body does it has to get rid of that excess sugar or glucose so what does it do it puts it into your uh, fat cells that's how you store that's how you get fatter and fatter and that's why type 2 diabetics are getting fatter and fatter because they're producing more fat cells because they're overloading their blood with sugar now type 1 diabetes is a lot more complicated and what that is not producing uh, glucose or pr producing insulin efficiently and so that's why people ha who have type 1 diabetes 
has to take extra insulin because their blood sugar is so high is to is to be able to get that insulin to open the doors up to let the uh, sugar into the cells with that injectable insulin the issue is that most di uh, type 1 diabetics thinks that's their uh, tool that they can eat more carbohydrates or more processed foods or more sugars because they know okay I'll just if my sugar level goes up what, uh, what am I going to do I'll just take more ins insulin well injectable insulin is also known and Dr. Jason Fung uh, who is the pioneer of type 1 type 2 diabetes actually states that injectable insulin is going to cause you if you abuse it to actually gain weight so it's kind of like the it's it's a two it they basically are related type 1 and type 2 as far as gaining weight so you guys that are want to know more about this go to Dr. Jason Fung YouTube channel type in his name and educate yourself now guys this is my disclaimer I'm not a doctor all I am is a messenger and so most of you that follow me know I like to back up what I say uh, with science and that's what my blog post will have science in there explaining this and then the science if you uh, go to Dr. Jason Fung's YouTube channel he's got tons of science there uh, actually showing his view of these two diseases also so guys, insulin is probably the number one. It's carbohydrate driven. That's going to cause your insulin level to go, go sky high. It's going to cause you to become insulin um, uh, resistant. And it's, gonna, it's, it's, the, it's the hormone that is designed to store fat. So you have to, you have to go on a root uh, protocol that is higher in good fats and low in carbohydrates if you want to get rid of that belly fat or body fat. One of the biggest side effects to increased insulin over time is if those of you that are 20 pounds or over and you've been like that for a long time, most likely you have a fatty liver. You're not going to get you're not going to get to your results with a fatty liver. You've got to reverse that. All right, so insulin is a hormone that is caused, that is known, that is known to store fat. Grenoline is another hormone that is known to uh, increase your appetite. It's, co it's considered your time clock. So those of you that have been eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner at certain times throughout the day, through your, through, you know, through years, then you have set the ghrelin hormone which is increases your appetite to a certain time that you have been eating for a long time so what I mean is is that those say for example you've been eating at 8 or 9 o'clock every morning for decades you've been eating lunch at 12 or 1 for decades and you've been eating dinner at 6 or 7 for decades so when you wake up and you're getting ready for work and all of a sudden you get that hunger feeling and it's getting close to 8 or 9 o'clock, that's ghrelin raising up and it's sending a message to the brain, okay, it's time to eat. Now, you may not even be hungry. You may not even eat food. You may be dehydrated because what happens is, I tell people, when you feel that hunger wave, do a big 20 ounce glass of water with pink Himalayan sea salt and let's see what happens to that hunger wave. See that's what Emily and I do when we're doing fasting and if we're doing a, pro a prolonged fasting and if we do we don't get many of them but if we do get them that's how we lower ghrelin is with our our hydrogen rich water which has mo uh, massive amounts of electrolytes and we have uh, we do our pink Himalayan sea salt which is also electrolytes most of you that wake up in the morning are totally dehy dehydrated and your your minerals are not are um, are imbalanced so by doing this that's going to bring ghrelin back down again so ghrelin the hormone ghrelin is actually this is a key factor here is actually produced in the in the gut and then it is and then when that goes up it is then telling the brain you're hungry and that's why around 12 or 12 30 or 1 o'clock you get hungry 
You got to eat. Or when you on your way home, as soon as you get in the driveway and you open that door and it's 5.30 or 6, all of a sudden you get hu hungry. It's not, you may not even be hungry. You may be dehydrated, but that's just your adrenaline, which is a time clock. You've got to control that, and it takes time to do that. You got to control it by changing your lifestyle and what you're eating and the time you're eating it. But also, there's adrenaline is your uh, appetite, it increases your appetite. There's another hormone that decreases your appetite. And adrenaline and, the, and this other hormone, they kind of work, they work to, to, together. That other hormone is called leptin. Leptin is a hormone that depresses the appetite. Now, this is the relationship between adrenaline and lep uh, leptin. Leptin also is produced in the gut and sends a message to the brain to stop eating. You're not hungry. That's what leptin does. And so, wouldn't it be great if you're doing a longer fast or if you're trying to lose weight? You're going if you produce more lep, uh, leptin, so that your brain is saying, "Well, I'm not hungry yet. I'm not hungry." That would be great, right? <clears throat> well, how do these two re relate to each other? Well, when adrenaline is down to base or to a healthy level, leptin is up. That's the key. That's how you're going to get uh, be able to actually do a longer fast. That's how Emily and I are able to do a 42-hour fast or 48-hour fast with zero cravings because well we're, we're fat adapted leptin the leptin is actually in your fat cells so it controls leptin controls your your appetite as far as telling you you are not hung, hungry and that's also produced in your gut but it's it, it's part of your fats it's in your fat cells so it plays a major role in reducing appetite now, the next one is peptide YY. So, I, I made a mistake here, guys. I, peptide YY is a hormone that, dep that depresses your appetite also. That one is made in the gut. I have to make sure I get my notes right. Leptin is in your fat cells. That's why a primal eating lifestyle is able to control the adrenaline and leptin because you're on a higher fat diet and so there's leptin in the fat so I hope that I mean I confuse myself so I hope that doesn't confuse you guys but peptide YY is another important hormone which is known by science to also be plays a major part in controls the app uh, the appetite and so forth and it is driven what causes your uh, peptides to go up and down it's driven by your diet or carbohydrates. So if you're eating a lot of carbs and you're producing a lot of insulin, that's going to bring the peptide of YY down. And that's going to raise your, you know, that's going to raise insulin, which is your fat storage hormone. So how do you how do you control peptide YY? How do you increase this appetite depressant hormones? You go on a high fat diet, very low carbs. That's how you're gonna you're, you're you're gonna do it. The other one you've heard the other hormone, which is number five, you've heard me talk about this one is cortisol. Cortisol is actually a very important hormone because it's called your fight and flight hormone, and it's, it's and and a lot of you know or a lot of you have been told that cortisol is a bad hormone because it increases your 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 eating which it does, and it also increases fat storage, which it does also. But it also is a very important um, hormone under a certain environment. So, for example, when Emily and I are doing uh, a fasting for 18 or 20 or 42 hours, then and we're exercising, the stress from exercising is producing cortisol. Now, we haven't eaten any calories for hours and hours and hours. So we have no uh, glucose floating, I mean, glucose in our liver anymore. We're burning body fat. Well, what's, what makes cortisol bad is when you're coming off, when you've, just become, when you've just stopped exercising, and then you have a post meal, 
and you have a high carb post meal, then what happens is, is when you eat those carbs and you produce insulin, then when your cortisol is high and it combines with insulin, there's where you're going to actually um, produce more fat. So that's when cortisol becomes bad is when you're combining it with a high fat meal when your cortisol is your level is um, lower or at base. Now cortisol plays an important, uh, uh, important part in a fasted state because it also activates your growth hormones also and so neuro, neuroadrenaline, adrenaline and so forth. And that's why in a fasted state, cortisol is really a, as cortisol actually raises your metabolism too and helps you burn more and more fat. Okay, that is in that blog post. It, actually, I posted a blog post strictly on cortisol and how to control it and how to break your fast. See, that's the key. That's, this is where a lot of you don't understand when you're exercising that when you've been fasting, and you're exercising in a fasted state, how should you break your fast? Well, remember this, cortisol is high. You gotta get that cortisol down to base so that when you do eat a solid meal, and you do have a little bit of carbs, it's not going to, uh, it's not gonna cause any weight gain. So, you get, so there's a proper way to break your fast about an hour before you have your main meal or your solid meal. And if you go to my blog, if you, if you go to this YouTube channel, hit the description, the, the answer will be there. Okay, the other one is, is your, probably is, is one of the best, uh, one of the best hormones out there. And a lot of people are spending tons and tons and tons of money, uh, at, especially those of you that are 40 over that want to slow premature aging or that are looking to look younger uh, most of you are, some of you are spending a lot of money with this and you're doing growth hormones injections and you don't understand that your body will actually produce its own natural growth hormones in the right environment. It has mechanisms set in the body to do that even at 40 and over. Actually, and, and those of you that are 40 and over, in my uh, blog post about all these hormones, it talks about why 40 and over needs to exercise even more and why 40 and over people need to add more 30 percent more protein per day because it's it has a lot to do with your weight uh your you know your weight uh loss and gaining lean muscle and and, and growth hormones is your safety valve in order to save the lean muscle as you get older and to add lean muscle as you get older but you have to know how to activate that mechanism to do that. And the three protocols that M and I do, the primal eating, which is a high fat diet, intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting is the key uh, protocol that's going to help you add the lean muscle if you understand how it works. Science has proven this. There's all kinds of brand new science about this. Also, it's going to help slow premature aging. That just makes sense. If your growth hormones are higher, then you're going to be producing more new muscle satellite cells or more new stem cells, which is going to make you look younger over time. And so this hormone plays a big factor in your burning that belly fat or body fat because you all know that the more lean muscle you have the more body fat you're going to burn and actually by doing an intermittent or prolonged fasting it elevates your metabolism and keeps it high even when you have your first keto meal solid meal it keeps you at it keeps your metabolism going high it's a myth don't let anybody tell you that intermittent and prolonged fasting causes your metabolism to drop it doesn't work that way but it takes time to get fat adapted. So guys, those, those, are, our, um, our, those are the most common uh, hormones you need to know if you're struggling to get rid of that belly fat or body fat. Like I said, go to my YouTube channel, type in Bill Mabry, subscribe to it, go to the description center uh, or section and click onto this 
to the blog post that will be there and it will explain each one specifically so you'll have a great understanding of what it means. And also guys, um, go to Dr. Jason Fung's YouTube channel. Check out all the science. He's got a great book called The uh, Diabetic Code. Any of you that knows a type 1 or type 2 diabetic, they need to follow him. That's who we were educated under. They need to follow him and they need to get his book because type 1 and type 2 in young and old is an epidemic. And now you can prevent it if you know how to change your lifestyle. But it's an epidemic, and Dr. Jason Fung is a pioneer and is teaching other kidney specialists on how to reverse type 2 diabetic, and he's working on how to reverse type 1. The type 1 diabetic is a whole lot, is a whole different story, and it's much, much more complicated. But the bases, as far as the foods, are the same, and type. And, and people who have type 1 diabetic just don't get it that sugar may be the root cause. So you may want to go check his to, uh, YouTube channel, guys. So guys, hope this was uh, some value to, to you guys. And I hope to see you guys uh, on the next video. So stay, uh, stay in the good, good life of health and know that sugar is the root cause of inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of all diseases. You guys have a great day. We'll see you guys next time around. Bye.